So like one of the keys for, for me for producing is just having like, I mean, I'm a little obsessive with it, but just being super organized, you know, like I save, I use the collections up here, um, save all my presets, you know, so if I get a new preset pack or something like that, I'll just go th through it really quick and save all the stuff I like. And then, um, okay, let's do... super tight one so a lot of the loops in there are like super stripped down and simple like this i just find that like a lot of loop packs have super complicated drums in them and i find these to be more useful sometimes <laughs> So what this is here is uh, I'm just making like a click, the uh, Fab Filter Pro C. If you guys want to use, if you already have this plugin, you want to use it for sidechain, just screenshot this because this is like the perfect setting. And what I like about this too is you can control the signal coming in. So like if I crank this, yeah, you start getting like a really deep kind of side chain. Is this how I normally do bass lines? Not really. Some, a lot of times I'll just play them in and then like I'll just jam over something for like five minutes or something and kind of take the best bits and clean it up, you know? So what I might do is just switch over to my monitors for a bit, just so I can get this like sounding correct.
What's on my drum bus right now? That's on my drum bus. But sometimes I would add um, like another EQ or maybe a saturator or something like that. But this glue thing is just like so good. It's so good. Like it's kind of all you need, honestly. Sometimes I'll do uh, OTT, like parallel OTT. I, I tend not to just go straight up OTT because it, I don't know, it just takes the low end out and it's kind of hard to deal with. But, but yeah, processing drums, um, what else do I use? Um, it's usually just EQ and compression. I think parallel compression is really important for drums. Not always, but if you want them to smack super hard. Yeah, the F9 racks, if you guys don't know what those are, should definitely get those. Really amazing racks for, uh, for Ableton. Try like a poly synth. <laughs> uh, I think the reason this this chord progression sounds kind of uh, dead mousy is because a lot of his stuff he'll will he'll write it over one note, so he'll he'll play like a root note. So it's kind of a good trick for writing chords, actually, if you just hold one note and then play bass under it. Like one. Kind of, it kind of works for everything. Right. One thing I added in the pack, which you guys might not really, at first glance, really understand what it's supposed to do, but I mean, you can use these however you want. There's no rules or whatever, but um, so if I go to tonal, go to track beds these are all just kind of two note or one note atmospheric kind of rhythmic th So they, I don't know, they work really cool just for like filling in space in the mix a little bit. You can just tuck them in there and they kind of sound nice. Is there anything on the master when I produce? Um, I think, what do I have on there? Bip. Um... So BIP is, stands for bounce in place. Basically it makes it so in Ableton you can just hit a quick, like a key command and it like just prints your audio faster than making a new track and resampling. But typically no, I think that's a mistake a lot of producers make. I don't think you should ever, there's no reason to ever put stuff on your master. I mean, unless, okay, that's, that's not true. Like. If you want like a crazy compressor setting on your master that's like doing something to the full mix that's desirable, then yeah. I mean, there's no rules, you know? Or what I used on all the splice stuff, 
there's a bunch of stuff in it, but typically I only use like one or two things out of there. Yeah, I get a lot of questions about like mastering and I feel like that's not really the most important thing. Like spend your time on the mixing part and then mastering is just like a piece of cake. You throw a limiter on it, maybe a little EQ. Yeah, I'll show you my uh, my mastering chain. There's some good there's some good stuff in it for sure. But don't ever use your mastering as a crutch. Like your mixing should be, as far as Sonics, that should be your number one priority. I spent years on being obsessed with mixing and stuff. So I guess I kind of take it for granted now, but I spent so much time on that stuff. And I think part of it is just knowing that there's no end to it. Like you can always, always get better. Which for me took like years and years and years and I'm still learning all the time. Let me show you the mastering chain. Big secret mastering chain. All right, so here's my mastering chain. So like I said, these are all in here, but it doesn't mean I use all of them. Like most of the time, it'll just be a couple of these things. So and I'll usually start with all of them off. Like I don't know why Gulf Us is in here. Get rid of that. Oh, so this is this is the chain I use for all the splice stuff. So there's a couple of weird ones like Soothe, which you would never normally put on a master. It just kind of mellows out harsh frequencies. So if you're working on a drum loop or, or something like that, that has some weird resonant sounds in it, it can get rid of that pretty smoothly. This actually is like my favorite thing right now, this Shope it's called. Um, it doesn't do anything special. It just shows the waveform after the master, which I find to be really helpful. Because you can kind of see like, okay, that's a pretty good waveform, you know? I love this, uh, this imager in, in Ozone too. I think it's great. A lot of times I'll take the sub stuff and just mono it, which you could also do with utility. It's probably like the better way to do it, but... Yeah, so obviously that's terrible, and but you can see it, you know. I still love this thing. It's been out for like a hundred years, but something, something about it just sounds great. To me. Reviver, this one's really, really good too. So you're already getting a little hot now, so that's why the utility is here. I'll just turn it down if I'm peaking a little bit. And I'll use OTT on the master too. I'm not scared, you know. Some people probably frown upon that, but I think if you use it sparingly and tastefully, then you're you're good to go. It kind of goes with anything, you know. I'm attempting to master in headphones, which is I wouldn't recommend, but yeah that's pretty much it the best thing you can do with a kick drum is just pick the right kick kick for the job you know i don't like i used to spend so much time on kick drums i would just layer them and have like five or six kick drums all stacked and it's just a waste of time like just start with something that sounds great right out of the box and then Unless you're one of those like techno dudes who that's like your whole track is a kick drum, then yeah, spend an hour on a kick drum. But there's so many, like go to Splice, there's like a million amazing sounding kick drums on there for pretty much every job you're ever going to need. New favorite plugin? Uh, let me see. Massive, Silent, Diva, like those are the kind of my go to's for bass stuff. Lossy's cool for lo fi stuff. This, yeah, that one's really fun. Probably the Valhalla Delay, honestly. I mean, you can do so much cool stuff with that. And it's $40. It's like you can't go wrong, you know? Which tape stop? Um, I believe this is the Kilohertz one. 
super basic i love this thing though so cool advice for muted funky guitar um for for muted guitars i love to use phaser and to me the best phaser is this thing right here which is like super slept on but like i've tried them all and to me this is just like the best one this I, we use this all over our records anytime you hear like a phaser it's usually this it's just got a super deep kind of sound to it i'll throw it on this arc. like that's nothing sounds like that that's the best one air makes that i guess i should be talking about the pack a little bit more but you guys already know what's up splice.com power tools volume two go check it out i think there's uh, hopefully there's something for everybody in this pack I, I tried to make it as diverse as i was capable of love you guys thanks so much for joining me i have um i have my own twitch account which is we are all over tv um so maybe i'll do another stream sometime on there just when i'm noodling around making something